Yep, it's obvious. I need to change the color harmony of my background for this video. I want it to be similar to the redness of my inner shirt. So let me do that now real quick. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna put software to the test. Three applications and they all automatically remove the background color so that you don't have to use green screen. The programs that I'm gonna be discussing are the background removal plugin for OBS Studio. Then we'll take a look at the ChromaCam software and then we'll get into XSplit VCam. This will be a series of three videos. We're gonna cover the background removal plugin first. We'll go over the CPU usage, whether or not the interface is easy to use, whether or not your hands can get cropped out properly and how well that line looks around your head and shoulders. When you're done watching, Watching these three videos, you will know without a doubt which one is best for your live stream. I can't wait. Let's get some. Mm. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. A while ago, I made this video that just quickly reviewed different applications online that you can download and automatically remove your background. And I got a comment from Adam Jin. He says, hey, Scott, why don't you do a practical for us, if possible, on these applications? And this is why this video exists. And I just want to let you know that I do read all my comments. Sometimes the comments are questions that ask me things like this. Hey, Scott, I've got a TestSmart Ultra HD and I split the audio into a Behringer Euphoria UMC183 via USB. And from there, it goes into my Windows version 29.23204. I just did an update. Can you tell me why I don't get my audio? Just let me know in comments. And those are the kind of things where I'm just like, uh, I just can't answer them. I don't know how to answer a question like that. So please, I, I do read them all, but sometimes I can't answer the ones that are like hardware based questions. You know, there's just no easy answer. <laughs> so I do my best. But anyway, keep on cranking with the comments and ask what you want. I do have an email as well. It's YouTube at bluefoxcreative.com. So if you want to talk to me and, you know, personally and send me a question, I'll be happy to talk with you. So there's a new plugin that was released in April of 2021 by a developer named Roy Shilkrot. And it's a plugin at OBS, link in the description. And it's exciting because it's brand new. He's already updated it seven times and he legitimately wants to know from you what you think and how it could improve the software in the future. So after installing this thing on your computer and testing it, let him know in comments. I think it would be great to make him feel good and just give him some feedback on what he's done. I will definitely be doing that. Okay, let's go in and download it. The button's in the upper right hand corner. It says go to download. We'll click that. And oh yeah, look at this, it goes into GitHub, which is great. I'll scroll down and there is a virgin, a virgin. <laughs> yeah, there's a virgin. There's a version, version for Windows and Mac, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Roy, for making two versions there. I'm gonna download the zip file for, <laughs> for Windows. Here it is, it's a zip file, I'll hit save. And I'll go into the downloads folder here. And I'm going to expand it with the 7-zip real quick. Hit OK. OK, it makes a folder. I'll double click it and we have a data and then OBS-plugins folder. So I'm going to highlight these. I want to make sure that OBS is shut down. I'll hit Control c which copies it. I'm going to go into my C drive, go into Program Files go into my OBS-Studio, and I'm gonna paste in those files. The question of the day is, when you paste in the data and the OBS-Plugin folder, is it gonna overwrite or append the information? And the answer is it appends it. It does not overwrite. I used to be like thinking that it was an overwrite because in any other directory, it would overwrite, but not in the program files folder, okay? So you can just hit Control-V for paste, and it just copies over the data, but it doesn't remove what's there, thank God. I wanted to quickly chime in and let you know that I'm super concerned about you finding the right information quickly. And so what I've done is taken all three videos 
created chapters and provided links that go to the specific point to a piece of information within those videos that will get you to the information that you need quick. So if you check out the description, you will see all those links laid out with headers explaining where you'll go and what you'll get so that you will be absolutely satisfied with the information you need, okay? There's also some link to some other things like getting the right colored green paint from Walmart, how to get it. Also, how to paint a piece of four by eight, $20 foam that you can use. It's always wrinkle free and a great solution to get great chroma key if you wanna do it yourself. Okay, we're in OBS Studio. I used a looping video of some clouds just so that we can test the background removal plugin. Okay, let's hit the plus sign and select video capture device, which is my camera. I'll hit okay. And just by luck, the default device that is selected here in this pull down is the camera that I want. If you don't see yours, you can click this thing and it'll give you a drop down and give you a bunch of selections. You should see your camera in here as a choice. Okay, I'll hit okay to this. And you may notice that when I move my head real fast, you see these horizontal lines appearing. That's called interlacing, and you can remove it by going into the source, right click, select de-interlacing, and then select retro, and now it's gone. Yes, all right. Okay, let's right click it again, hit filters, and at the top here, audio video filters, click the plus sign, and select background removal. If you don't see this, restart OBS because it probably didn't grab the changes that you uploaded when you installed the plugin. Hit okay. And based on my research, the first four settings should be the following. Middle, middle, smooth silhouette should go all the way to the right, and the feather blend silhouette slider should be at the far left, which is zero. zero. Very important. The second that you start to slide this to the right, it crashes OBS. And Roy, the programmer, if you're hearing this video, brother, if you can figure out how to get this to work, it would be absolutely epic because it really does help make that edge less noticeable. So man, if you could figure that out, that would be super epic for the plugin. Okay, next part is to select your color. I highly recommend that you select green, hit okay. If you have a semi-powerful graphics card in your PC, check off use GPU for inference. It just makes that line a little bit better. And now we get to test the segmentation model. And these are the different ways that the line is calculated and there's a bunch of different ways. One is called Cynet, so if we click that, you can test it, move your head around, and as you can see, there's a little bit of funkiness going on with a the line. There's a little bit of color coming in. My head's kind of weird, so that one's not super great. The next one is ModNet. If I move around again, uh, this one's blinking. I don't know, it's kind of funky. I'm gonna say no to that one. Next one is Media Pipe. Okay, this one's not too shabby, no blinking, color's not going into my hair area, so that's not too bad. And finally, we've got selfie segmentation. And again, this one's not, oh, there, that's not good right there. There's a reason why I had the background set as orange and red, because I really wanna test the power of these plugins. So this one's a little funky. So I would recommend Media Pipe as the selection because the line seems to hold up beautifully. You do see some color in here, right? But it's okay. So I'm gonna hit close. And now that I have a camera source here with a green background, I'm gonna go into filters one more time and select plus sign under effect filters, select chroma key, hit okay. And because green was selected, that is the default color to be removed. So you don't have to really play with any of these settings. Hit close and you're good, all right? Now I've tried all the segmentation modes. None of them did very well with my hands. So if you're gonna use this plugin, you can pretty much forget about doing all kinds of gestures. It's okay, I guess. <laughs> now I'm gonna do one more thing, and that is I'm gonna hang a white sheet behind me, and let's see if we can get rid of the curvy line around where my neck meets my shoulders. We'll see what happens. Okay, I just hung a sheet behind me. Let's see if we can get rid of this color right around my neck here. Let's, let's turn it back on. Go into filters again, go back into the background removal, and let's turn the eyeball on on the left here, and boop, hit close. And lo and behold, it does seem to remove the color a little bit better. The line still makes that funky wavy effect, but I have to admit, the line does seem to go away around the, you know, where my chin meets my shoulders. So that's, that's a positive. 
Now I'll have you know, when I turn this thing on, I can hear the fan on my computer ramp up because there's more heat being generated inside my computer. If I go to view and go into stats, it'll bring up this window and show me how much energy or processing energy is being used. Currently I'm at 32%. Frames missed due to rendering lag is 3,746, 4.3%. The bottom line is this is using some horsepower to power this effect. Hey Mof, how you doing? Okay, let's give this software a performance grade. The ease of use is a five out of five stars. Fantastic, it is a plugin and it works beautifully. The quality of the line, that is the line that separates the color from my head and shoulders, I'm gonna give that a four and the reason why is the, the uh, feathered line parameter, if you adjust it to the right and turn it on in any way, it crashes the OBS program. You know, I can't give it a five out of five. I wish I could. I wish I could see that uh, parameter work and function beautifully, but it just doesn't work at all. So we're going to have to give it four stars. CPU usage is a four. I'm almost thinking it should be a three. But we're going to give that a 4 because the usage is at 30%. Maybe after we compare it to the other programs, maybe it's not that bad. And of course, the hand crop, I'm going to give it 2 stars because none of the uh, various algorithms that are used to calculate the line allow for hand cropping. So gestures are out for this plugin. If you're interested in looking at the other reviews of the other two programs, you can see them right here. I will catch you over there. Best wishes, stay strong, and keep fighting.